so let me show you what I uh, what I had in mind. Um, here's one of the boards. This is the first one I'll get back. Here are the two register boards and my um, indicator boards, program counter RAM. So the way to use these is to take them into the garage and uh, bandsaw them into smaller pieces. You can get boards made individually, but then it costs you just as much as one big board. So this is kind of a poor man's way to do things. So we can imagine we have a couple register boards. And uh, we'll have to get some uh, strip, strip boards. I think it's called a strip board. Just uh, 100 mil centers, uh, just strips. Um, you can kind of imagine it as a proto board. Um, so uh, this this connector uh, will solder down to the board. So imagine this is the board. So we'll solder that down and then uh, imagine uh, here's another one. So we will solder it down and that leaves us free this connector and this connector which are the uh, the data values in these two registers. So we could do things like uh, uh, get an indicator board. Let's get one of those. I'll cut one of those out. Okay. So here we've got uh, eight LEDs, and we could uh, we could solder one here. And we could we could solder one here, and then we could just play with this. We could uh, uh, put a, maybe a dip switch on the uh, uh, on the data lines. We could set some address lines, uh, some uh, some data values, and then we could uh, toggle. There's a point here. There's there's two pins here, one for write, one for read. So then we could write, and we would see that uh, data bus go into the uh, into the register, and on the data bus, uh, we could take one of our one of our indicator, uh, and we could put that on the data bus. So, and we could have a, like a dip switch here. So we could set the dip switch. We'd see that value on the LEDs. We could then clock that into this register. We could then um, uh, take off the dip switch. We could then hit the right, uh, uh, put a put a, a right assertion on this, and that would put the value of this A register onto the bus and then we could hit the read over here um, or the um, write on this one and then it would take this read value and put it into this write value and then you would see these LEDs match. So that's the way that this kind of link, uh, 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 a Lego, Lego system would work. And then we could take a look at maybe this other board. Let me, let me quickly uh, cut it out, give you an idea of how it would work. This is the uh, ALU unit, and uh, I wanted a proper ALU. A lot of, a lot of the uh, homebrew TTL uh, computer CPUs that are being built are just a uh, regular add and subtract. Uh, this would have had a full a full logic set. Uh, these chips here are an LS. Uh, 381, and you can see that it's got two connectors, one connector here, one connector here. So if you wanted to use these, we'd take off our LEDs, and then we would put, we would match these two together. So these two connectors are going to match, and these two connectors are going to match, and we're going to solder them together, or we can have little connectors, little uh, socket connectors, so we could plug these on top. And then this connector here would plug down to the to the main board, and so now we could load things into register A. We could load things into register B. Then those would appear here in our ALU. You we could then set some bits to say we want to do an exclusive OR, and then we could hit the uh, write, uh, and that would put the the value onto the data bus, and we could we could examine it here. Um, we could still piggyback on the LEDs. Uh, on top of this board. So then we would see uh, the A register, the B register, and the resulting register. Um, 
And so you can imagine that we're going to have other, um, uh, other circuits as well. Uh, I'll go ahead and cut those out. Uh, we're going to need a we're going to need a program counter. So let's let's cut that one out. Uh, so the program counter can go somewhere on the bus. Doesn't matter where. And we need some RAM. Uh, so we would take our RAM, we can put that on the bus. So you can see we can just build this thing up. And you can see that over the course of uh, you know six inches or so, we're having almost a whole CPU. Um, so it's going to be much better than uh, than 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 trying to trying to build one of these big things. Even though these are really cute and really impressive, uh, this is just going to be a, a more compact way to do it. No wiring problems, um, no no uh, reliability problems with 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 uh, these type of things. And uh, then when we get around to it, we'll be able to swap things in and out very quickly. Uh, these proto boards, uh, maybe you can spot things in and out too. I think they'd be a bit messier. Uh, but this is a little bit cleaner. Um, and then, you know, when we get ready to, we could uh, we could then say, okay, we've got a complete CPU. Then maybe we can attach this to some other thing. Um, uh, in fact, RAM isn't part of the CPU, right? Uh, so RAM is actually external. Um, so we could have uh, something that looks like RAM, something that looks like ROM, and something that looks like I/O. So once we have a CPU, we have RAM, ROM, and I/O. Then basically we have a computer. Um, so that's that's what we'll do. We could have an I/O section that's maybe like an MSI front panel. Could have little switches and displays, maybe a hex display and a hex hex uh, input. We could have uh, RS232 uh, be able to hook that up to the computer. Um, so I think it's going to be very flexible in 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 uh, going forward. So that's my idea.